This is Dr. Mears, and today we're going to learn about the chi-squared test of independence. This is the example that we did in class together when I taught live. Dr. Mears wanted to investigate if gender and preferred color of shirt were independent. This means that she wanted to find out if a person's gender influences their color choice. She conducted a survey and organized her data in the following table. So this table is our observed. This is what we observed as we went through and compiled the data from our survey. So this is called the observed table. Doing a chi-square test of independence, you received this worksheet. And what I did is I filled it out so that the video would go a little bit faster. Um, so we are going to go through the steps just like I did um, in class. However, some of this is filled out, so you may have to pause um, if you weren't in class to get the notes. Or you may want to pause anyways to make sure that you're understanding correctly and asking me questions. Okay, here we go. Um, step one, we have to write the null and alternative hypotheses. So we look to see, here's the HO, so this is our null hypotheses here. And we fill in our two categories, gender and preferred shirt color are independent. And the null hypothesis, or the H sub O, is always are independent, meaning they, they have no the dependency on each other. They don't influence each other at all. Now, our alternative to that is our HA. And our H sub A again you fill in the same categories the same way gender and preferred shirt color are not independent and so you could write dependent here um, I like to keep the wording to the same so one is are independent and the other one is are not independent um, which means that they have some type of influence on each other so let's go through and perform perform a chi-square test to see if we are going to reject or do not reject our null hypothesis. Here we go. Step two, we have to calculate the chi-square test statistic. So what we have to go back to is the observed or the original table they gave you in the example, and we have to add on the row, column, and overall total. So this is the table that they gave you here. With the numbers, we are adding on our total um, columns total row and overall and in class I said please label so these are our row totals down here are our column totals and this is our overall total so in order to get your row total you're adding 48 12, 33, 57, and that should give you 150, which means there are 150 males that were surveyed. For females, 34, 46, 42, 26, that equals 148. So there were 150 males surveyed and 148 females surveyed for a total of 298 people. For our column totals here, 48 plus 34, which is 82, that means that 82 people um, preferred black shirt. Here, 58 people preferred white, 75 preferred red, and 83 preferred blue. So now that we have our row total and column total, we can go to part B. Part B says make an expected value table from the totals. For each entry, do the following. So for each one of these, we have to get the row total, multiply it by the column total, and divide it by the overall. So let's say for male, we would look 150 prefers a black shirt, 82. So for male here, this is the row total for male. And for black shirt, this is the column total. So I have filled it in. I'm going to go through um, quickly with you. Hopefully you can see it. Um, the number's okay because I did write relatively small. Um, so again, for male who prefer black, 150, which was here, times 82, times 82, divided by 298. I did go to three significant figures, so correctly rounded to three significant figures is 41.3. I'm going to go to male who preferred a white shirt. So again, male, 150. White shirt, 58. 150 times 58 divided by 298. Correctly rounded to three significant figures is 29.2. I'm going to do it for red and then blue. Notice the 150 is the row. 75 is the column for red. 83 is a column for blue, and I'm still dividing by 298. 
I'm going to do the same thing for female, but what changes here is my row total, which is now 148. Female who prefers black, 82. So 148 times 82 divided by 298. Then on to female who prefer white, 148 times 58 divided by 298. Red, 148 times 75 for red divided by 298. And finally, blue, 148 times 83 divided by 298. Each one of these was calculated out to three significant figures. Part D. Check to make sure each number in the expected value table is 5 or higher. So we have to look here, 41.3, 29.2, 37.8, 41.8. All of these numbers here have to be 5 or greater. If they are not in your IA, please come and see me. So all expected values are greater than 5. So this is the sentence that you're going to state. Then you're going to state, may proceed with the chi-square test. So you have to physically write down that they are greater than 5. If they're not, come and talk to me. Okay, on to part D. Now part D is calculating the actual chi-squared value. Um, and so I'm actually going to put this up here. And in order to do that, you have to use this formula. This formula is the chi-squared formula. Chi-squared equals the sum of the observed minus expected quantity squared divided by the expected value. So what we're going to do is we are going to be going to the observed. So let's take male who prefers a black shirt. So we have 48. So that's the observed. We're going to subtract the expected number. So this is our expected number. So it's going to be 48 minus 41.3. And that's what I have here. 48 minus 41.3. Square it divided by its expected, which is 41.3. So these two numbers here should, should be the same. So this was the observed minus the expected squared, don't forget, divided by the expected. O minus E squared divided by E. Um, then you go on to the next one. So the next one was going to be male preferred white shirt. So that's going to be 12, come down here, male preferred white shirt, 29.2. So that's 12 minus 29.2, don't forget to square it, divided by 29.2. Again, these numbers should be the same here. That's my observed value. The next one is male who preferred a red shirt, observed is 33. Male who preferred a red shirt, the expected is 37.8. 33 minus 37.8 squared divided by 37.8. Next, the blue shirt, men who prefer blue, 57, men who preferred blue, 41.8, 57 minus 41.8 squared divided by 41.8. We're not finished because that's just the males. We have to move on to the females. So jumping down, here's 34, females who preferred black, that is my observed. Females who preferred black, 40.7, that's my expected. So we see 34 minus 40.7 squared divided by 40.7. The same, I did not forget to square. That is my observed. Next, 46. So we have females, 46 preferred white. Down here, females expected 28.8. So 46 minus 28.8 squared divided by 28.8. I just jumped down over here, ran out of room going to finish up the last two. So the last two is red, which is 42 for female, minus 37.2 squared divided by 37.2. And for blue, 26 minus 41.2 divided by, oh, did I say 41.2 here? I'm sorry, it meant 37.2. Um, you can clearly see that though. So this one's 41.2. Don't forget to square it. So I like writing all of these out first, as you can see, um, and then making sure I'm double checking with both of these. Um, please remember when you're doing this, you're not using the totals anymore. The totals were just for this expected value um, chart. We're just using the inside numbers now to compute our chi-square test statistic. Okay, so after we're done filling all the numbers in, take out your calculators and you can actually put in, I like to do one at a time. Um, I get very worried with all these decimals and notice I did go to four decimal places for each one. 
I wanted to have um, a much more precise number for chi-squared, so I didn't go to three significant figures. I just kept it with um, four places after the decimal, which is fine. I didn't want a round off error. So what I did is I actually just did one of these and calculated out. Then I did this one, calculated it out. Then I did this one, calculated it out. So on and so forth down the line. After I did that, I double checked my work, of course, and then I added them all up and received 34, sorry, 0.9572. So now if you were a little off on these decimals, it's probably because you, you may have not gone to four decimal places, so you may have had a little round off error. So you try to get as close to 34.9572 as you can. So it's okay if so these decimals are off a little, a little bit. Um, if they're a lot, then come and ask me and we'll see what mistake you made in your work. So that's the chi-squared value. So we're going to need that. I'm going to put a little box around it because we're going to come back to that. Step three, we need degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom is number of rows minus one and number of columns minus one. So the number of rows, the rows are going to be going across. And so we see the rows, there's male and female, which is two. You do not include the totals, just the original values. So actually, I can even go back to the observed here. So number of rows, one, two here. And the number of columns, columns are down. So one, two, three, four. So number of rows was two minus one. Number of columns, four minus one. Two minus one is one. This is multiplication. Four minus one is three. So one times three, the degrees of freedom is three. And I did circle that. Okay. Step number four, we have to look up some critical values. Now, for your IA, you most likely are going to be using the 5%. Um, that is the default in statistics. Um, so we, what we have to do is look up these critical values using our degrees of freedom. So to do this, look up your degrees of freedom and the significant level you wish to use. So I want you to try all three. Um, so that we can get these numbers. So now how do we get 11.345? So you take out your table that I copied for you and you go to the degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom was three. So we go right here. Then what you do, so, oops, I'm sorry. So you go to three. So here we are, three degrees of freedom, which is right here. I want to find first an alpha of 0.0 one O, which is at the one percent significance level. So I'm going to look for O one O. So we see over here chi squared, and then little tiny, it says point O one O here. That's eleven point three four five. So we went to the degrees of freedom of three all the way over and stopped when we saw point O one O, and that's the number that I got on the paper here, eleven point three four five. Now let's try a significant level of 0.05. So at the 5%, that's an alpha of 0.050. So what we're going to do, we're going to still stay at three degrees of freedom of three, degrees of freedom of three. Now we're going to look for 0.05 and that gives us 7.18, 7.815, sorry, 7.815. And so that's what I got over here, 7.815. Now let's go to the 10% level, which is an alpha of 0 0.100. So 10%, we're going to be looking for 0 0.100. Notice they also go to three significant figures. Same degrees of freedom. You use it throughout your problem. That didn't change for this problem. It may be different for another one. Um, but once you're set on a degrees of freedom, you stick with it for that problem. And we're going to look. Here's 0 0.01, 6.251. And that's what we got over here, 6.251. Um, so now we have to compare. We have the chi-squared, which is going to be 34.9572. And that's the number that we received up here, chi-squared, 34.9572. All I did is I bring it down. The chi-squared value has, has to go first. This has to go first. The critical value, and I said you're most likely going to be going with that 5% level. The critical value is 7.185. You could choose these others, but then you're choosing a different degree of um, confidence. And so I talked about confidence levels. And if you want to discuss more, we can. This video is just how to carry out this chi-square test. So chi-squared's first. Critical value you chose is second. 
we compare these. This is greater than. So we're going to be looking greater than. So we look down on the bottom. Which one is greater than? This one says less than. This one says greater than. This gave us a greater than, so we're going to be using this one. As you can see, chi squared, which is 34.9572, is greater than our critical value of 7.815. Therefore, we're going to reject HO, so we're going to kick that null out. Therefore, we have evidence that gender and preferred shirt color are not independent. We can further say that there may be an influence. We have evidence that they may influence each other, that gender and preferred shirt color may influence. Um, but this test just tells us, are they independent or are not independent? And we found, because our chi-squared was greater than our critical value, that we rejected our null hypothesis, our H sub O, and therefore gender and preferred shirt color are not independent. So this is how you carry out a chi-squared test by hand. We are going to be learning about how to use the calculator, which is going to be step five here, um, as you can see on your packet. However, I am not doing that for this lesson. That is a different lesson on a different day with a different video. So this has been chi-squared test. Hopefully it helped. Thank you.